In this video, we're going to discuss what is a look ahead schedule. By the end of this video, you'll know why you need a look ahead schedule with you 100% of the time in the field. So let's go. All right, everybody, I'm super excited to take you through this video. I'm going to be on the whiteboard. I'm going to show you some cool visuals. And what we're going to do is really provide you three really key things. Number one, I'll show you the secret to reduce the amount of interruptions that you have on your project. I'll also show you the habit that will really transform transform how you walk your project in the field with your trade partners. Also the key to get your trades to have more meaningful conversations in your huddles and in your meetings. I mean, who doesn't want that? So stay with us. We're going to have a good time. Okay, so let's go to the whiteboard. You had to know I was coming here. So the purpose of your look ahead schedule is to prepare work. Let me show it to you in the frame from start to finish. On projects, we will always have a master schedule, okay? And and that master schedule will provide the start and the end date and it will also provide milestones in between. So however you look at it, it's going to show you your overall schedule and it's going to show you your milestones in between. After that, you're always going to have your pull plan. And that's where in your schedule, whether you're using CPM or TACT, you vertically align that milestone and then you pull plan the sequence, usually backwards, but it can be done forward, and you confirm that sequence. So whatever your sequence was in your master schedule, you're confirming that with your trade partners. Then you come down and you have either a two or a three or a four week. And I'm going to actually talk right now about a six week make ready look ahead schedule. So I'm just going to call this a look ahead schedule. And this is where from your master schedule and your confirmation of the sequence in your pull plan, you filter out six weeks of your schedule. Now inside this, if I was to blow this up, if you have, you know, week one, two, three, four, five, six, you'll have certain activities in here. And these activities are important because this is where you're heading, right? And you ask the question, is this activity ready? Does it have the labor, the manpower, the permissions, right? The equipment? Does this activity have the equipment, the labor, the materials, the permissions? Does this activity, does this activity, does this activity? And if you get to a point where one of these activities, the answer is no, then that is a possible roadblock. Okay. And so that goes back to the promise. How can you reduce interruptions in the field? Well, it's to find them before they ever actually happen. And so you use this make ready look ahead format and you ask, is it ready? And if it's not, that becomes a potential roadblock that you fanatically track and remove and you fix it before it ever interrupts you in the field. From there, just to be brief, then you'll filter out a weekly work plan. So I'm going to put WWP. And then from there, you'll go ahead and create your day plan as a part of the tact and last planner system, right? So you're going from the overall, the macro to confirming that with your trade partners down to your look ahead, to your weekly work plan, to your day plan. So this is when it's used really briefly. Let me tell you this, this right here, you review on a weekly basis with your project team, your pull plan. This happens whenever you need it to happen. Your look ahead schedule, you and your weekly work plan. This is reviewed weekly in your trade partner, weekly tactical. Some people call this their sub meeting. Some people call this their trade meeting. They can call it their last planner meeting or your weekly work planner meeting. Whatever you call it, this is the weekly meeting where you spend time with your trade partners to actually develop a weekly work plan, which we're not going to talk about here. And also look at the look ahead schedule to go through the activities, make sure they're ready, and then identify if there's any roadblocks. So you're going to use these activities to make work ready. So I'll put that down here to make work ready to align procurement and so what that means is that we want procurement to hit those dates and then to find roadblocks. I want you all to please remember a quote, problems are not a problem. The only problem is when we don't think we have problems. Every project has problems. Use that make ready look ahead to find them and get rid of them before they impact your work. Okay, so I'm sure you're wanting to know what one of these things looks like. So this right here is a killer example from our friends over at Urban Core. They wanted an actual two week look 
look ahead from their current week. And that's so they can go out and do field walks. So follow my mouse cursor on this video over here to the left. You'll see the legend for the actual tacked wagons. This is what encompasses or encapsulates the activities for the project. And then you can see how they show up in the matrix setting or format of time and location over here to the right in our typical tack planning format. The other thing is down here we have what's called the one-off activity area. That's a part of their weekly work plan which actually incorporates two weeks ahead where they can write down any activities that are a one-off activity. Then down here at the bottom we have a place for notes. There's also something even cooler. It has a second page. Let me show you that now. We're always worried about the visualization of time and space. And so on the front side we have the schedule and the look ahead that we can take with us in the field and actually walk the project. And on the back side we have the zones. And that will show the zones for the actual project so that we can visually see this. Remember visualize time and space. So you'll see here following my cursor floor one all the way to floor five. We also have some rules to the tact system out in the field. A place to put notes. And then we have a little spot over here for people to watch out for handoffs, the speed of the trades, the preparation of future areas, how well they're finishing, and any roadblocks they might find. So really the key here is that you are, once you have your schedule and you can print it out and you can look ahead and see the future, we should be able to engage in what's called zone control. And as a part of this video, we'll give you this document that we've made for you so that you can control your zone. Let me give you a brief overview and bring your focus to my mouse down here to the bottom left. And I'll highlight some of these actual objects. If you as the superintendent can go out and walk your project with this look ahead schedule and talk to your crew, talk to the foreman and the workers and spend five minutes asking, hey, are we finishing as we go? And then taking another five minutes and saying, hey, are we preparing out ahead? And are there any roadblocks? Is there anything keeping you from making your dates? Is there anything keeping you from actually working through and completing these zones? Then we will be able to have some powerful discussions out in the field. And as a part of this guide that we'll give you as a part of this video, I also want to show you what you're looking for when you go have these conversations. On this sheet, what you'll find is that we're always looking for waste as shown up on the top left, unevenness as shown on the middle on the left, and overburden which is shown down at the bottom on the left. And each of these are bulleted out so you can specifically see if there's any possibility or any times or instances where your crews are riddled with waste, or if they're interrupted by unevenness, or if the crew is overburdened. And if you do find that, over here to the right you'll see this little part that says solutions for production control. You can can actually counteract the effects of waste, unevenness, and overburden by implementing these concepts. Leveling your work, managing production, implementing foreman and super control, creating stability, making sure you're installing a quality product, and removing roadblocks out ahead. If you have any questions about what those mean, I want you to check out the book or the audio recording from Elevating Construction Foreman. We go through each of those strategies in detail. And so out in the field, just like this blank sheet of paper and follow my mouse here if you don't mind. As you're going out and having these conversations, if you find waste, if you find unevenness, if you find overburden that is keeping your crews from working in their zones at the right time, the question is, what will you do? Well, the answer is first and foremost, I'm going to give you a secret like I promised early on. You're never, ever, ever, and I'm just messing with you a little bit, but you're never, ever, ever going to walk out into the field anymore without your look ahead schedule and on the back side, your zone maps. Because if you take this out with you, you have such a tool to look out into the future. You can literally walk zone by zone and literally see exactly what we're supposed to be doing for rhythmic work. And then like we said down here at the bottom, one off work and take notes. Okay, then on the back, you're not just visualizing a schedule, you're actually visualizing the locations as well. And so if you have your schedule and a nice little pen with you, as you go on your clipboard, you can make notes. Okay, there's a roadblock here. Okay, there's something that's needed over here. All right, there's an RFI on zone B over here. And you can take notes and monitor this. Yes, we've wasted a piece of paper, but now you have these notes that you can then take into your meetings and your huddles to have richer 
richer and more deep conversations. This is actually a picture right here of one of the projects that I was talking about. They're right there in their foreman huddle and they're talking about the plan for the next day, where they are, what roadblocks they might have, and they're working as a collaborative team. But they didn't come into the meeting just ready to sit there and be entertained. They came into the meeting having their look aheads and their notes from their zone maps and that is how you have richer conversations in your meetings and in your huddles. And so if you remember anything from this video what I'm saying is that we are getting massive results when we work with our clients when we do project support we are getting massive results when we not only work with them and their trade partners on really getting a killer schedule that flows a schedule that you can finish on time a schedule that increases your gross profit but also one that everyone can see nobody we can't be a team unless we can see the schedule and so if you have this tool for you and your foreman that you can all take out in the field and not just even and see the activities but also see where everyone is supposed to be then you can improve your handoffs the speed of the trade so that they can go the same speed the same distance apart the preparation of areas whether or not they're finishing and you can identify and remove roadblocks before they ever affect you and now that you're having these conversations in the field with your foreman and they're rich and they're deep and you're actually preparing work now you have data in your meetings to really dig deep and do some really good planning and now no longer will you just be saying well this is what I'm doing tomorrow you're there you're there you'll start to focus on how you'll start to actually collaborate and get what each other needs to create flow in the field and that's when you're going to start to achieve production and so again I just want to say we've created a landing page for you for this so that you can use this template we do this with our clients all the time if you want help give us a call it's just that easy we can become just a normal part of your scheduling process on your project to where you don't have to worry and we can finish work on time and the other thing that I would say is that we're going to give you a link to elevating construction foreman if they read that they'll know how to use this system perfectly so here's my question what would it mean to you if you and your trades could see as a group know as a group and act as a group and have more meaningful discussions and actually control production in the field if this is worth something to you then let's go i hope you've enjoyed this time on we go